we praise the Lord for another Sabbath that is extended to us, allowed us to enjoy the early phase of 2023. The Lord is good, the Lord is kind, and uh, the Lord is long-suffering. We praise him and we are grateful for the mighty God that we have. It's difficult for, for me to say such a God because it's like I'm saying there is another God. This is the only God who is there. Not only that we have, but the only God who is there, even though some don't believe in this God. But this is the only God that is there that is available, and we praise him for his abundant mercies. As we start our service this morning, may we bow our heads and pray. Lord and Father in heaven, we praise you for this Sabbath. We praise you for the message to heal the broken altars. Lord, as you give us this message here at Solusi, May it be a day when we shall say in the future that day our broken altars were restored. Be with us. In the name we pray. Amen. The challenge that Israel had at the time was that there was no rain for three years as you go to First Kings chapter 17, Elijah had warned that for three solid years there shall be no rain. Why? Because Ahab and uh, his uh, entire team uh, and the entire Israel has departed from the uh, precepts of the Lord because Israel has departed from the precepts of the Lord there shall be no rain for three solid years and uh, exactly as the prophecy of Elijah for three solid for three solid years there was no rain. And uh, when there was no rain, everybody felt it. I once read Alan Bullock in uh, his uh, biography of uh, Adolf Hitler. He writes a book entitled Hitler a study in tyranny. And uh, in that book, uh, Alan Bullock says, the economy is the best politician. It speaks a language that every citizen can hear. Uh, when the economy speaks everybody, that language is intelligible to every citizen. Even the illiterate can read the economy. Uh, whatever state a person can be in, when the economy speaks, it is more eloquent than any politician. And uh, uh, now God says for three years, there shall be no rain. And uh, as the effects of uh, the drought were felt, everybody realized something is wrong in Israel. Things are not right in Israel. And as we get to First Kings chapter 18, we encounter Israel 
in the midst of this drought, and uh, there is an uh, atmosphere of despondency, an atmosphere of despair, where everyone is disparaged, and uh, there is a lot of frustration that is permeating in the air. And Israel recognizes that something is not right. This is not what should be prevailing. And uh, Elijah comes. And uh, he, we encounter him in verse 30, where he heals the broken altar, where he mends the broken altar as a prelude to the rain. And uh, I want to highlight a few things as uh, we are on the introductory phase of our message. Uh, the first thing that is uh, important here is there was a recognition by Israel. Number one, there is a recognition by Israel that there is a drought. Israel acknowledges that we have a drought. There is no rain. That is the first thing. You see, when there is a problem, there are several responses that we can have. Uh, the first resp uh, response is denial. Is to say there is no problem. Everything is okay. It's, uh, it's you who is seeing a problem. I don't see a problem. Everything is well. That is one response. Then there is another response that they refer to in psychology as projection. When there is a problem where you don't locate the problem within yourself, you locate the problem in the other. It's, uh, they say, the most eloquent preachers on adultery are adulterers. People who preach moving sermons against adultery are adulterers. And uh, after they have preached against adultery, they have uh, some feeling uh, of uh, forgiveness that I have spoken against this thing. Lord, I have told people that this thing is not right. And uh, there is some solace within them that uh, at least I have been able to identify adultery in other people. And uh, I have eloquently outlined their adultery. You know, you know in, in one church where I pastored, somebody preached a very, I was not yet there, I was told the story, uh, but uh, the one who told me the story, I trust him. Uh, so he says, somebody preached on one Sabbath, he was preaching on witchcraft. And uh, he says, the brother preached on witchcraft uh, and also on adultery. He preached so eloquently, so eloquently, and uh, the church was moved. And uh, you know how we do it in the traditional Africa. When we have felt the sermon, we come up front crying. That's how it used to be. Now people don't hardly cry. But uh, then they used to, and they did on that day. They went up front crying because others recognized it. They are weaknesses, adultery, whatever. And uh, after he had preached, people came up. Those struggling with witchcraft, 
Those who are struggling with witchcraft, please come. You will die with your charms. Come, come. And people came. And after the service, he say uh, to the preacher and uh, a close relative, we're working together, home. And uh, the preacher said to his relative, who had also come up front during the same one, said, yeah, Lamsa unzwile malum. Yeah. I, I, I told the witches, I told them the message. And uh, the uncle said, I, uh, you caught me unaware. Uh, you caught me unprepared today. That is the other response that people have where they minimize their weakness. No, it's not, it doesn't matter after all. It's not only me who does this thing. Everybody else commits this sin. It's uh, not that important. It's, yeah, they can preach. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they are many other sermons to preach. Why preach about my weakness only? So there are several, I, I could have enumerated uh, as many as possible responses that people can have when there is a drought. But the most difficult thing to do is to acknowledge our sin. That Lord, it's me and uh, it's me alone. There is no other causal factor except me and there is nobody who can correct this except myself. Then after Elijah had uh, preached and uh, there is the restoration uh, of the broken altar. Uh, let me also go back to this. Uh, there was a drought and the drought manifested itself in several ways. It was not only material drought, but uh, it was also spiritual drought. It was uh, a drought that was manifesting itself in several ways. And uh, I want to uh, enumerate those manifestations of the drought. Number one, there was a relational drought. People were not having very good relations. And I want to say we can have a relational drought even as a church here. Okay. Let me tell you another story. You know, uh, I'm a pastor and I love ministry. And as pastors, we love one another. We, if you want to see that we love one another, we come for funerals to bury each other. That's one sign that we love one another. But uh, let me tell you something. Pastors are good people. Not all, it's not all of us who, who, who do what I'll tell you. We are very good people. But uh, we also have weaknesses. So one time, two pastors that I know, and uh, they are late, so I don't suspect anyone they are late. Uh, they, their relationship somehow uh, it disintegrated, really disintegrated. And uh, I could tell, and uh, I was relating well with both of them. And it worried me that I relate to A, we relate very well, but their relationship was disintegrated. And uh, I am now conflicted. How do I stand with them, three of them, three of us? How do we stand together? So, uh, 
it did not heal that relationship until the other passed away. The first one passed away. And uh, I expressed my commiseration to the other who was still alive. I said, oh, said man, so and so has rested, said about that. And the other said to me, uh, Luana, Luana Gapumule, Luana Gapumule, that one, let him rest. Yes. And uh, that is a pastor who preaches forgiveness, who preaches love. And uh, he was still uh, preaching love. But uh, he was convinced that the only solution about that one is to rest. And uh, I am glad. I am sure, in a way, he was saying, I am relieved that he has finally rested. Yeah, hamba satan, uh, go satan. At times, relationships can disintegrate in the holy ground here at Solus. Among people who call upon the Lord, right here in this church, where people come together to pray together, to call upon the Lord, there can be a relational drought. When people are seated in their houses, there is, when heaven is hearing, instead of hearing prayers, heaven is hearing and watching gossips, very eloquent gossips, family so-and-so gossiping about family so-and-so. But ah, that family, the day they will leave Solusi, Solusi will be right. The day that family leaves Solusi, Solusi will be okay. And uh, maybe so and so, something uh, bad has befallen so and so, and the other is saying, ah, hey, Lopez Zululo, hey, we are come sorrow, Lopez Zululo, I. It's Simboyake, Ayuanek. His whip is not visible, but uh, he knows how to whip. And uh, he is whipping, uh, Lord. Uh, you are acting. That's why you say, Vengeance is mine. Thank you, Lord, for that divine vengeance. There can be hatred, acrimony among people of God, people who sing together, we are marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, but within there is anger, there is hatred, palpable hatred, Ah, or you can see that these people hate each other. And uh, one friend of mine said, there are 12 gates into the city, my brother. Uh, that is the good thing about heaven. There are 12 gates into the city. So if you enter via the other, I will enter via the other gate. We may not enter via the same gate, but the good thing, the Lord, and there also, he told us, there are many mansions in my father's house, so we will not sit in the same mansion. We won't sit, we won't reside. We won't be domiciled in the same mansion. You have your mansion, I'll have mine, and uh, we may not be needing each other. We will only be in need of the lamb. So I don't need you here on earth, and I don't think I'll need you in heaven as well. There are people who hate each other to that extent, and the only relief that they will have is the day when they shall sing here in church, we have no abiding city here as a killing Pela Lapa, and uh, the other is lying here on the on a table or whatever pedestal will be there, and uh, they sing and get out that for sure he is resting. He won't come back again. She won't come back again.
to trouble. The trouble of the brethren is no more. Uh, there can be, there was a relational drought. Number two, uh, there was a spiritual drought. Actually, the spiritual drought in itself, it manifests itself in various modes. It is the axel. But uh, allow me for just today to uh, use spiritual drought in reference to the prayer life in our homes, to the Bible study culture in our homes. Uh, we can have drought, spiritual drought, right at the fountain. Um, years ago, there was a singer, uh, Paul Mataviri. He said, Usafane nyota makumbo arimumvura. There are people who are thirsty, but the feet are inside the water, but very, very thirsty. There are people who are thirsty here at Solusi, spiritually thirsty, but the pipes are plenty. You can open the pipe on Wi-Fi, you go to the library, there are multiple versions. If you want to open it in RSV, there are multiple versions in the library. You want to open it in Greek, you want to open it in Latin, you want to read your Bible in whatever language. There are multiple in the library, there are multiple softwares, but there are people who don't read their Bibles. Right here at Solus. The WhatsApp messages that they are keen to read are those on payday, uh, waiting eagerly, meekly wait and remember not for the announcement on payday. Are uh, the salaries out? Those they read religiously. They read, uh, I wanted to say prayerfully, uh, but uh, it's difficult, I'm starting to say prayerfully, but they read those. Their Bibles know a spiritual drought, a tendency uh, to pretend to be working with the Lord while actually working alone. Number three, a material drought. Material, actually, when there is spiritual drought, as uh, we are told in Malachi, spiritual drought translates into material drought. Here, there was physical drought, where Israel had nothing. They were hungry. God promised us, he said, we shall be the heads and not the tail. He promises that in Deuteronomy chapter 28. He says, we shall be the head and not the tail. And uh, Mohandu once said, as Adventists, we have this promise. We shall be the head and not the tail. As you go to the promise of the Sabbath, we are told, you and your maid servant uh, and everybody who has visited your home, the assumption is that those who keep the Sabbath, they should have workers under them. Uh, not you and your, way, and your employer. The assumption is when you keep the Sabbath, you don't need an employer. You must be the employer yourself. And uh, we are told, you and your main servant, and we should be the head. And Mandu says, uh, why are God's children not the head? Either there is something wrong with God. That's one possibility. Either there is something wrong with God. He is a God who promises something so colossal that is unreachable. He is promising a utopia. He is telling people there is something which is coming which actually is impossible to reach. He is just talking about the ideal, and that ideal is not reachable. That's one 
possibility that something is wrong with God or God himself has forgotten his promises. That's what Elijah says. He says maybe God is sleeping. Go and wake him up. That might be the problem. Maybe God is asleep. He has forgotten his promise to lead Israel, to make Israel the beacon of admiration. When people look, they should be able to say, Israel is the blessed of the Lord. This is the anointed of the Lord. This is Israel. And uh, this is a nation of priests. But something can't be wrong with God. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the problem is not with God. The problem is with God's people. You know, uh, I saw good times. The good thing is, me, I was born in Rhodesia. Uh, not to say I want to go back to Rhodesia, no. I don't want to go back to Rhodesia. But I was born a little bit yesterday, a little bit earlier than most of us. There are some who are senior, uh, Elta Klava there, senior to me, uh, Mrs. Wandasara, Elta Paicha, they are senior to me. But uh, during my boyhood, I was there in Kwekwe. Actually, in uh, 1980, my, brother, my father bought a car. Uh, it was 20,000 kilometers, a Peugeot 404. Nice. It was 1980, it was in Zimbabwe. Nice. 404, not dandy. Nice, as nice as a car could look. And uh, we enjoyed that for four, four years. You sold it, uh, I think after 20 years or so, um, maybe after about 15 years, engine never opened and my father was a rough, a rough driver. He is now aging, now he is much more gentle, but he was a rough driver. He drove that Peugeot on dust roads. He would do 120, 140 on dust roads, but uh, the car remained intact until he sold it. And uh, I remember in Kwekwe in those years, as we would say the plush setups in uh, Kwekwe, that's where I had part of my boyhood. And uh, we were staying uh, in Bizo 19, and uh, we would see Masase, Kwekwe Junior School, with all those lawns, nice looking, those yards close to, in Masase, close to Kwekwe, nice yards, not Jurawol then. These Jurawols came later. Then they were not Jurawols. You would go to these setups, they were not Jurawols because no thief would visit. So it was just flowers, which were beautiful flowers, nice, nice yards. There was, I don't know, uh, the word pothole, when it came in, I don't know if it was in the dictionary those years, I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe there were places which had potholes, but there were foreign language. If you would ask me those years, please, can somebody explain to us pothole? I would quickly think of a pot, uh, because that was a foreign word. Uh, no tar at pothole those days. I was also here at Solusi 94 as a student. We ate as students here. If there was an institution where people ate, there is none which compared with us. My young brother visited me from, he was training at Hillside Teachers College. He came here to visit his brother. I took him in the morning, Sabbath morning, to the cafeteria uh, to eat there. He asked me after the meal, he said, is this what you eat every day? Or it's a special day? I said, no, man, that's our, that's what we eat. We proudly told him, that's what we eat. And we invited 
also, that's 98, 95, we invited the students from the University of Zimbabwe, uh, Adventist community, to visit us, to come and play games with us. They came on Friday. We took them to our cafeteria here. We did not, nothing special was cooked. What we used to eat, it was every day. There was juice every morning. You, there was bread. You would eat bread uh, as you wanted. Whatever, if you wanted to eat an entire, entire loaf, you would just get, it was just buffet. What is eaten in hotels, that's what we ate here those days. Just get the grape. And uh, why would you hunger for bread when there was banana bread? You, you just look for banana bread. The other bread from, uh, we didn't like it that much. So you just pick one slice, eat, then you pick some banana bread, then fruit, uh, one banana, one apple, then milk as much as you want. You just get the open. And uh, our friends from USA said, this is Kenna. I, I think this is the Canaan that the Lord was talking about. This is how it was where you could tell uh, from our appearance that we were living very, very comfortable. And uh, don't uh, assign blame to the present administration. Uh, things changed long back before they came in. So, assign them to yourself. Where is that solution? Where is that solution? And uh, as I conclude, let me get there. Uh, number one, what is needed? It is a restoration of the broken altars. When we recover our relationship with the Lord, many things will be right. The reformation, the revival, has to start here. The rep uh, reparation of the broken altar. We have to repair the broken altars. We need to pray in our homes. We need to confess our sins. We are told, Leviticus 26 verse 40, uh, when people confess their sins and pray, I will heal their land. It's us who have to pray. Confess our sins. Don't confess the sins of another. Confess your sin. Yours. And uh, mine. There are things I have done wrong that have made this church not to pay a source of marvel. There are things I have done wrong on my part. I have wronged students myself. I have. And there are things I need to do better in 2023 as we repair the altars that uh, have to change this place. Yes. There are times when I've been tired, when students have come to me asked me to do this and I'm quite tired and I say, okay, uh, please WhatsApp me tomorrow. And uh, they WhatsApp a reminder say, a gently reminder say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm driving now, please can you remind me again tomorrow. They remind me tomorrow and I tell them, oh, okay, 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 fine. I will uh, take your thing to the meeting. I, I, I'll, take, I'll have a meeting, we will uh, discuss your issue and uh, they forget or they whatever. They are patient because they are talking to an adult and they wait for me for a month or two. Uh, say, what about my issue? And I say, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm sorry, your issue, I set on it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forget about it. But I'm, I'm sorry, uh, okay, say, okay, say, I'll wait on you. And uh, they stay with their issues and resolve me. I'm confessing. And, uh, this needs to change on my part. There are instances where I have done wrong, where I have made solution not to be the ideal solution that the Lord requires. And what have you done on your part? There are things, as I've said, 
that are obviously wrong. That us as a church, as we come together in 2023, we have to repair the broken altar. And there has to be a change. And that change has to start with me. It has to start with you. Don't uh, start by complaining about the grass at Exley Hall before you cut the grass right at your house. Right at your house, there is a uh, grass weeds like this. You have to search for the person, whether where is he or where is she, and uh, uh, walking very confidently, uh, saying, ah, Exley, carach, hey, 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 hey. Start there. Start there, where you are located. Change yourself. That change, that reparation of the altar, it has to start with you from your own corner. Change your own corner. Make solusi to be right. Treat students right yourself in whatever capacity. Treat lecturers right yourself. Treat visitors right yourself and i feel guilty i have walked several times seen uh some broken things right look right here in our church uh nobody can go up the balcony because you can fall you you can easily fall it's dangerous to go up to the balcony of the church and i have come here sat comfortably elder clava has called us several times to uh repair the lights at times, I have not come. Others, I have come. And uh, I have always said, Lord, I'm praying where I am. Can you please restore solace? It's not only a year of prayer. It's for you to take a break and repair the broken altar. So your prayers, yes. But your prayers have to be manifested. We want to see you carrying a break, repairing the broken altar. Confession of sin. Number two, what we need to do together as solution. We need commitment. Active commitment to this place. Personally, I believe in solution. I believe in this institution. And uh, we need people who will say, if they will be the last person who will remain standing, healing solution, that person shall be me. Uh, at times, there are people who hate solution, who are waiting for its demise, and they are praying for its demise. And we see some posts by our detractors on Facebook that the altars should not be uh, repaired. And uh, they write, uh, actively on Facebook that uh, Solusi is Ikapod, etc., etc. It may be, but you want the Lord to come back. That's what we want. If the God is left, we want him back here at Solusi. So those posts which are deriding Solusi are not helping us much. Yes, they might be reminding us that there is sin, there is whatever, but what we need now are people who will carry their bricks come and repair solution. So if uh, you want to be an active socialite, uh, enumerating, outlining the sins of solution, but doing nothing for solution, thank you for your activity, but solution can still do without your activities. What solution needs desperately? It needs you to carry your brick, come and repair the broken altar. I believe in this place, personally. What I am is Solusi. I am what I am because of Solusi. My father came here in the 1950s. Our home area is uh, in Tonsade, in Slovela. We, from a very peasant background, he came here. He came for high school here and uh, went for teacher training at Lower Coelho. That changed our circumstances. It taught us to pray, it taught us to have a living commitment with, uh, to the Lord. And uh, 
it changed our material circumstances. I, uh, it changed me. And uh, I believe in this place, that this is the right place. And we need people who are committed to Solusi. We will say, come rain, come sunshine. We will work for this place. We are praying now. Those who say, Lord, this is the time to repair the broken altars. Lord, make me an Elijah. And uh, it shall start with me. I'll start in my own family. I'll take my family to pray. And I want Solusi to be a better place. It should become the land of milk and honey that it was. But I have to do my part in order for Solusi to go back to where it was. May you stand as we shall have a prayer of commitment. Uh, I invite Pastor Ndlovu and uh, Pastor Mashangu to come up front that they pray for us. They pray for Solusi to go back to where it was and pray for the church uh, that we heal the broken altars. We recover our connection with the Lord and that has to start with you. It has to start with me. We are praying after the prayer, we are done. Let us move on and let us pray. Our Father, our Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to see yet another supper, the second supper of our year.
the one who can face him. And they ask the God that he will forgive us when we have embarrassed him, when we have failed him, in the way we have handled things, even the way we have handled issues that we have to church. Oh God, the pastor has taken us through what Israel experienced when Israel decided to go the other way around. But thanks God for the ministry of Elijah. Who oh God and then picked themselves and he responded. And he called Israel back to God. He called Israel. And the Israel gathered together. And the together as a nation, they had the privilege to build broken altars. Altars are broken in our families. There are no prayers in the morning. There are no prayers in the evening. We are the priests. We are listening ourselves. When we start the day with our God, we are listening this place. When we start our way in our offices without God, synagogues have been planted and some of us have never attended the synagogues. And those synagogues are saying, let's come together and begin our day of God. This is the church where every Tuesday we are supposed to come here and meet with you. Thank you. 
promise that we are going to be with us. And we claim that promise to Jesus. Prayers are not enough. We want the power to be able to Because you say, in a way, faith is not the basis And so we invite you to be with us. We help us to come back in this year of 2023 to make a difference in the corners where we are. May we shine so bright that the light of solution may go far and beyond as people who see your presence in this place. We thank you, Father God, because we have prayed in faith, knowing that we have heard the answer.